Good afternoon, uh, my name is Andreas Borkenstein and I want to talk about the new Lantis Quantum and the Aconex Quantum. As you all know, uh, laboratory studies, uh, optical bench analysis is very important for objective evaluations, but clinical studies and case series are important too. So what counts in the end is patient satisfaction and surgeon satisfaction. And here with this presentation, I want to share with you uh, my clinical experience, but just some words to lab studies. We did, uh, we recently published two uh, papers, uh, evaluation of the Lentis L333, the so-called Lentis Quantum, the hydrophilic uh, enhanced monofocal lens and compared it to the monofocal counterpart. And on the other side, the same evaluation comparing the hydrophobic platform, the brand new Aconex, the AN6Q, compared to the monofocal counterpart. And I will, uh, this conference tomorrow, there is a symposium, I will show the results in detail, but uh, uh, just in short, we evaluated the modulation transfer function and the strail ratio to get a kind of assessment of the optical quality and to see if uh, advertisements and um, of the company are true or not. Uh, we wanted to see if the monofocal and the enhanced monofocal lens have some differences. What we can uh, summarize is that the true focus MTF curves of both Lent Lentis Quantum and Aconex Quantum enhance the depth of focus compared to the monofocal uh, control lens. And the through frequency MTF and the strail ratio uh, where only slightly or no uh, uh, decreased, there was no decrease compared to the monofocal. So uh, this uh, fact could lead to very good behavior in real life, uh, meaning that the contrast sensitivity is equal to the monofocal lens. As you know, there is often no clear differentiation between either of lenses and enhanced monofocal optics. Uh, here just an overview. We are talking about enhanced monofocal IOLs, the Lentis Quantum and the Aconex Quantum. Uh, you all know uh, Teleon has a large portfolio. We were using the multifocal lenses uh, since years, and then they have the true EDOF lens, the uh, MF15, uh, with a target um, a distance of about uh, 60 centimeter, and now the new quantum optic for a little bit more for intermediate uh, distance uh, for about 80 centimeter. The basic principle of the quantum lens is to create a single uh, extended focal point to increase the depth of field. And it has a very smooth and stepless uh, transition zone to prevent dysphotopsia. Because as you know, dysphotopsia, halo and clear are the most uh, common negative effects of classic or uh, trifocal or, or multifocal lenses. Here I want to show more the clinical aspects. Uh, we start with the hydrophilic lens, the Lentis Quantum. As you all know, it is a, a blade haptic designed lens and it's very easy um, in the OR. So you just have to put the lens out of the box, put it in the cartridge. Uh, you have to take care of the two uh, notches here uh, in A and B to have the right side up and then put some OVD on it and ready to go. So uh, it could not be easier and uh, faster. And the Aconex, it is a hydrophobic C-loop uh, designed lens. Uh, we are using the Medicel injector and I'm using 2.4 millimeter clear corneal incisions. And it's also very fast and reliable with this injector, but you could use other injectors too. So uh, my first case is, this is a series of 30 consecutive cases of the Lentis Quantum, of the hydrophilic version. The mean age was 74.6 years. And uh, as uh, I told, uh, we used 2.4 millimeter clear corneal incision. The mean IOL power was 22.2. And we wanted to uh, evaluate the implantation behavior. So we uh, measured the IOL injection time, unfolding time, and the total delivery time, which was 13.8 seconds. But more important than time, uh, uh, in my opinion, is that you don't have uh, problems during the implantation and unfolding. 
So in the first 30 cases, we have no overriding or no uh, handshake phenomenon or sticking. So this is very good. And in 24 cases, uh, I was able to position the lens right into the back. In six cases, I had to use an additional instrument like uh, irrigation, aspiration, handpiece or spatulum to position the, the trailing haptic in the capsular back. But uh, in general, a very reproducible and safe uh, unfolding. We had also challenging cases, three uh, floppy iris uh, cases and five cases with small pupils uh, and using iris hooks or rings. And even in these cases, the unfolding is very easy. Uh, of course, it is important as it is a plate haptic designed IOL that you remove the OVD between the lens and the capsular back uh, because otherwise you can have some uh, intraocular pressure increase uh, in the next hours after surgery. Um, maybe it's uh, the best to show you some real world uh, cases. So this is one case, a 78 year old uh, woman with cataracts and hyperopia. She is a retired university lecturer for biology and was Googling and searching all kinds of lenses and technologies. So she was kind of expert, Google expert. Uh, and her hobbies are not only gardening and biking, but also working on the computer and reading. And her grandson is uh, studying in the US and therefore she is Skyping a lot. And she was demanding uh, to have um, uh, spectacle independence also working on the computer, but she uh, was aware of halos and glare because uh, a friend of her had a multifocal lens with dysphotopsia and she was afraid of it. So we thought it would be a good uh, option to use uh, the new lentis uh, quantum. Here is the pre-operative data. You see it's hyperopic uh, and best corrected distance visual acuity 0.5, the left eye 0.4. Uh, surgery was performed without complications. You can see here the uh, implantation and the unfolding, uh, like the butterfly, it's really very smooth uh, and easy. And the post-operative data four weeks afterwards is best corrected distance visual acuity 1.0 in, in decimal. And the good thing, the uncorrected intermediate visual acuity tested in 80 centimeter 0.6. Uh, all of these cases um, were treated with 1.5 um, diopter reading glasses to read in near distance everything. So this is another benefit that they don't have uh, different glasses for uh, the near, uh, for, for different distances. And this 78-year-old uh, uh, woman was really happy because she could do many, not all, but many of her daily tasks without glasses. This is another uh, very challenging case, um, a cataract patient, uh, unfortunately with very reduced uh, general condition, uh, lots of surgeries in the past and dizziness attacks and uh, problems with uh, wearing his glasses. He had four or five different uh, glasses, uh, tolerated no progressive glasses. And uh, as you can see, uh, a side diagnosis of age-related macular degeneration, a dry form with trusen, but without edema. And uh, by now, I would not have considered him for a multifocal lens. It's kind of a contraindication. But we thought that we were discussing about this new EDOF and enhanced monofocal lenses. And therefore, we uh, tried to implant him an uh, enhanced monofocal lens, the lentis quantum. And here you can see Again, the implantation and the OR uh, slit lamp uh, pictures. Uh, fortunately, the OCD remained stable after the procedure. And you can see um, even the best corrected distance visually QED uh, is good. Of course, this codoma is there like before surgery, but uh, the uncorrected intermediate visually QED 0.5. And he could do uh, things like eating and preparing uh, food and these things without glasses and this was a, a benefit for him because of his other uh, side diagnosis. So uh, we can consider um, this new kind of lenses, the enhanced monofocal lenses, not only in refractive cases, but also in challenging cases. Um, my first 30 cases, the preliminary results, uh, I can say that the uncorrected distance visual acuity 
is really comparable to standard monofocal lenses. I have not seen any difference. By now we have no dysphotopsia. Um, patients were satisfied. Uh, the reading glasses are still tolerated. Uh, we use 1.5 diopters. That's enough. And um, it's a very large area of possible applications. So maybe a larger area than with typical multifocal lenses. And then uh, since some months I was lucky to have the new AN6Q. It's the proven quantum optic, but uh, with the hydrophobic material and in the classic C-look design, you can see here some OR uh, pictures. Why? So as you know, uh, since decades, uh, uh, we all are discussing benefits, advantages, disadvantages of hydrophilic and hydrophobic material. This is a market survey from 2021 that 65% of all lenses implanted are hydrophobic and only 27% are hydrophilic. And uh, it's not only about uh, PCO prevention and the capsulotomy rates, uh, but also, uh, as you can see here, some benefits uh, of hydrophilic material like the lower refractive index and therefore uh, minimizing the glare and the reflection phenomena. Uh, then the uh, thing that the hydrophilic acrylic is easier to put through a small incision or that the hydrophilic material um, is more resistant to some touching or some other things uh, prior to surgery a better biocompatibility like uh, in uveitis or diabetes so therefore uh, i guess it's a very good idea to have the same optic in both materials because now the surgeon can choose and select uh, the best option in the individual case um, here again, my first cases with the AN6Q, uh, 21 cases, mean age was 70.8 and again 2.4 millimeter incision size and we use the Medicel injector and um, the unfolding is easy but a little bit more tricky as it is a hydrophobic material. So in some cases when you have a, a hyperopic eye and shallow uh, anterior chamber, then you can rotate a little bit to the right like in other uh, 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 injectors and lenses, but then uh, it is very easy to implant it directly in the capsular back. Uh, again, uh, fortunately, no uh, sticking or handshake phenomena and no overriding. In 17 cases, uh, I was able to put it right into the back, and in four cases, I used uh, a, an additional instrument. We tried to not only to read from company and do the marketing, but also try to uh, proof and confirm and we have done the lab studies and the clinical cases and therefore I can say that uh, in my opinion we have on the one hand side advantages for patients like of course the enhanced vision, improved quality of life without ad adding additional risks like this photopsia and for the surgeon uh, it's a benefit because you have on the one hand side a kind of new basic uh, standard mm -hmm. care in our facility it is and it will be a kind of standard uh, cataract care lens. And on the other side, you have a new option for premium uh, uh, lens with easy selection. You have both, you have hydrophilic and hydrophobic material, and you have a C-loop design and a blade haptic design. So uh, every surgeon and in every case can select the best option. So to conclude, um, we have uh, good results by now. Of course, this uh, only preliminary results. We don't have long-term results by now, uh, but we believe, or I believe, that uh, enhanced monofocal uh, IOLs and the quantum technology is a kind of game changer. And in my opinion, uh, of course, um, maybe the, the next standard lens is uh, in the near future. So thank you very much. Very much. Thank you.